Hey, you're watching Swerve on YouTube and today I'm showing you how to create this effect right here. I call it the galaxy explosion, but um, this design was inspired by Dorian Legret. I think I butchered the name, goddamn. But um, if you check the link in the description, you should see a link to his Behance and he has some amazing designs and this design is basically a an idea that he came up with and I'm just showing you how to create a tutorial on it because there's not any tutorials on the internet at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and comment and let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is the before and the after. So this is before, after, before, after. And as you can see the before looks super crazy. It looks pretty gnarly and it looks like a pretty crazy gremlin <laughs> so um um if you're wondering where i get my images from um for for commercial work i don't really like to use images but for tutorials i just get my images from google so if you're using this design to make a commercial work for a client then always make sure to get a free image off the internet with a license or um, just pay for a license and get an image, but um, never ever just go to Google and get an image. I don't remember. I don't recommend it at all. <laughs> so um, um, first things first. What should we do? All right. So I'm gonna get a brush, and at the moment I'm using the Charlie Bow Water brush. It's a pretty cool brush, and I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description as well. Um, first thing we need to do is set a mask so if you go down to the bottom you should see a mask option down there and um, what we're gonna do with this mask is get rid of all of this section here and all of that section here so we're left with this little gremlin in the center all right so um, set your brush to black and make sure you select um, anything that can get rid of this section here so what I'm going to do first is get the default brush for Photoshop and what we're going to do is go over the areas that we don't want alright so you probably noticed that my background is black as well um, it's not really black actually I've already um, made it a dark blue to match this dark blue up here but um, with any image that you get, make sure to match this background or just, you know, make sure that the background kind of blends in with the actual design. Oh, all right. So I'm just quickly going around for this bit. You don't have to be super precise. Just make sure that you have got rid of the areas that you don't want. So um, for those who don't know how this works, um, the lightest bit of the design is going to be the one that protrudes like that and all the dark bits in the back will stay behind and create this super illusion that everything is coming out at you on the screen all right so here comes the fun bit I'm gonna use the rough brush and I'm just gonna refine over the areas that I don't like and the good thing about masking is that you can always you know change your brush to white and bring back the areas that you don't want to get rid of like this area here so it's kind of better than using a brush or well it's kind of better than using the eraser tool which i super hate all right um what else did i need to do all right get a brush All right, so I'm almost done. All right, I'm just making sure. Oh yeah, another thing that you wanna make sure of is that you don't have any sharp edges down at the bottom like this or on the sides. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that using the normal default brush. All right, that's perfect. And I'm gonna bring back this section here as well. So it takes a little bit of time to just touch up, but um, once you get it, it's gonna be pretty crazy and it's gonna work like a charm. 
So I'm just alternating back between those two brushes. Um, I think I have it. This looks pretty amazing. So um, moving on from this bit, this is going to be the next bit where we're going to move to the 3D stage. But before we do that to pre prepare it, what we need to do is go to File Export as PNG. And I'm just going to save it as Galaxy 3. All right, so once you have it saved, what you want to do is go to File, Open, and find that file. I've saved it in a folder, so it's pretty much, you know, in its state. And what I'm going to do is go to Open. And once you've opened it, what you need to do next is go to the 3D section over here. Make sure that your lay is selected. And what you want to do is go to new mesh layer and you want to go to depth map to plane. And this is the bit where you get the really super extrusion type of effect. As you can see here, it doesn't look too pretty, but you know, once we're finished with it, it'll look absolutely amazing. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is go to 3D section here and go to current view. As you can see on the left, or on the right you've got the field of view which is set to 35 millimeters um this is all camera terms so if you're not new to cameras or if you're used to cameras you'll know you know depth of field field of view all of that stuff but um what you want to do is set your field of view to somewhere around um 78 78 is pretty much clean so um, to get the effect that we have here, what you need to do is go to um, environment. Oh, well, not environment, actually. Sorry about that. Um, you want to go to scene and you want to go to presets and select unlit textures. So once you do that, you get a really awesome effect right here. Um, so we could just leave it like that. But what we need to do first is render it first. So this is the render sign. All you need to do is click that. It will load. And once you're done with that, just go to the layers panel here and click control. Well, not control, right click it and select convert to smart object. All right, so it took a while, but we got there. And as you can see, we've got an amazing design right here and it looks pretty close to what we have here. So what we're going to do now is go to add some simple effects like um, vibrance, um, saturation, curves, just to add color. So first thing I'm going to do, well, first things first, we need to set our Photoshop to essentials. So just in the panel there, just so we can see it in the thumbnail. And when you zoom in, you should see that it's a bit too sharp and a bit too blurry at the same time. So what we're going to do is go to um, filter and what we're going to do is select um, surface blur and surface blur is um it's a way to smooth out edges and not blur it out too much basically so i like to set it to radius one and threshold i would say two is fine so just a little subtle change and click ok all right so next thing you want to do is select um vibrance I never ever mess with saturation because saturation is super, it changes it to a different color. So that's what you don't want to do. What you want to do is just go to vibrance and just increase that a bit. I would increase it to 90. That's not a bit, that's a lot. So increase it to 90 and you should get a nice subtle color improvement and once you've done that, next thing you want to do is go to curves. And we're going to set the curves down to a little bit. And we're going to create a little S. And then we're going to go to red. Um, what we're going to do is take out reds from the... Actually, you know what? Let's add some reds in the highlight. And get rid of the reds in the shadow. 
or we can add all right so this is just a um the way i like to experiment with things um sometimes i like to take away red or increase it so it seems like um when you add red to the shadows and red to the highlights it looks pretty good so i'm gonna keep i'm, I'm gonna keep it like that um for the green let's see all right so take away green from the shadows and increase greens in the highlight that's good blue that looks pretty good all right Yeah, all right, so we're pretty much on track. Um, we're gonna increase more vibrance or add more vibrance. All right, that looks super, super clean. Oh my gosh, um, what else? So what we can do is go to filter, add noise. And I like to add around four, but for this one, I'm gonna add, hmm, around five. Yeah, five works good. It, um so um by adding noise you just blend the colors together to you know make it look a bit more vintage um i i super like this this looks absolutely amazing all right so um that's pretty much it so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial um as i said before don't forget to leave a like subscribe and comment and you know tell me what you want to see next in another video and i'll absolutely do it